This video will cover the encoding specificity principle and context and state-dependent memory. Have you ever been in a situation like this? Sally is in her living room, listening to her favorite song on a hot summer day when she realizes she needs to charge her phone. So she heads to the bedroom to get the charger. By the time she gets there, she can't remember what it is she's looking for. Unable to quite put her finger on it, she heads back to the living room. As soon as Sally gets back to the living room, she suddenly remembers that what she'd been looking for was her phone charger. What's happening when you remember something as soon as you retrace your steps can be explained by the encoding specificity principle, or the idea that it's easier to remember information when the retrieval or remembering conditions are similar to the original encoding or learning conditions. When we're trying to remember information, like the fact that Sally needed to charge her phone, our brains don't just process the fact itself. They also encode aspects of the situation, like where you are, what you're doing, and other contextual information. All these cues are connected in memory, almost like a web of information. Any one of them can serve as a retrieval cue. When one cue in the web is activated, it's easier to create a pathway to the information you're trying to remember. For Sally, being in the living room was a retrieval cue that activated her memory about her phone's battery being low, which she forgot when she was in the bedroom. One example of the encoding specificity principle is context-dependent memory. In 1975, a major study in this area was released. The researchers had divers study a list of words. Half of them studied the list on dry land, and the other half studied underwater. Then, the divers were given a test to write down all the words they remembered. Like in the study phase, they were randomly assigned to do the test on land or underwater. The divers who studied underwater remembered more words when they were tested underwater. But it wasn't just that being underwater was good for their memory. That's because the divers who studied on dry land remembered more words when they were tested on dry land. In other words, when the conditions for studying matched the conditions of the test, the divers remembered more words. Being in the same environment during encoding and recall provided retrieval cues that facilitated their memory. Okay, but not all of us are divers, and we don't study or take tests underwater. Context-dependent memory has also been studied in more everyday situations. For example, one study tested whether there were context effects for studying with background noise versus in a quiet environment. Again, the researchers found that what mattered was the match between the studying and testing conditions. People who read the article in a noisy environment remembered more information when they were tested in a noisy environment. Meanwhile, people who read the article in a quiet environment performed best when tested in a quiet environment. Most tests take place in a quiet room, so it might be best to replicate that when studying. As another example, multiple studies show that when final exams take place in the same room that lectures are held in during the semester, students perform better than when exams are scheduled in a different location, like an exam hall. Some research even suggests that test scores are better if you take notes in the same format as the test, that is, handwritten notes for a handwritten test and typed notes for a computer-based test. Scents, like mint, chocolate, or burning wood, have also been shown to produce context effects, explaining why a particular smell can sometimes bring back a nostalgic memory. A different form of encoding specificity is state-dependent memory. While context-dependent memory relies on retrieval cues in your environment, state-dependent memory is about internal cues. One example is mood. Mood is a mental state that can facilitate memory. That is, you tend to remember things better when you're in the same mood state as when you originally learned or encoded them. Consuming certain substances has been thought to produce state-dependent effects, but the evidence is inconsistent. For example, drinking similar levels of caffeine during encoding and recall does not improve memory. The findings are more mixed on alcohol. Some studies find that a matching intoxication level facilitates recall, but others do not. One thing most studies can agree on is that being sober at encoding and retrieval leads to better performance than being intoxicated at both times, probably because alcohol has other effects on cognition. There is one other major limit to context and state-dependent memory, which is that their helpfulness depends on the type of memory task you're doing. To show you what I mean, let's go back to the diving study. In 1980, the researchers conducted a follow-up study where the basic setup was the same, they had divers study a list of words either while on land or underwater. 
Like in the first study, the divers were tested on land or underwater. This time, instead of being asked to write down all the words they remembered, the participants were given a written list of words and asked to check off any that they recognized from the studying phase. Unlike the original study, this time there were no context effects. Participants recognized the same number of words, whether they were tested in the same context or a different one. Why might that be? If you think about it, one of the tests was more difficult than the other. In the first study, the divers were asked to retrieve the words from within their memory with no outside help, which is known as recall memory. In the follow-up, participants just needed to make a decision about whether they'd seen each word in the studying phase, recognition memory. The words were right in front of them, serving as retrieval cues, so the participants didn't need other cues, like being in the same place they had studied, to activate their memories. This is an example of the outshining hypothesis, which states that context effects facilitate memory only if a stronger cue is not already present in the environment. So, for example, if you were preparing to give a speech from memory, a recall task, preparing in a similar context to the one in which you'd give the speech might be helpful. But if you were completing a recognition task, like taking a multiple choice test, context effects might not be as helpful for your performance. In summary, the encoding specificity principle tells us that when we encode a new piece of information, we also encode aspects of the environment and our internal states. Later, being in a similar environment or state can activate your memory for that piece of information, making it easier to recall. However, the outshining hypothesis states that this only happens when other stronger cues are not available. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something interesting.